and today we're going to be covering bracelet charms. Three specific ones to be exact, and believe it or not, they're all not alike. There are ways to put them on in a different fashion. So let's get started. But first, let's of course go over our crystals. Let's first talk about the clear quartz. It's known as the most powerful healing stone there is to date. And because of that clarity, it actually brings about clarity to ourselves, to our minds in times of stressful events. It helps us see a clear picture. I actually had to take these outside to film for you guys because I wanted you to see the clarity that it brings. Once you put it in front of a pink flower, for example, you can see that it almost reflects that pink onto the stone. These actually are available in my shop and I sell out every single year. So I don't even know when I'm going to get this kind of setting again. It's just a really phenomenal stone. And then we go into the rainbow fluorite. Look here. Look at the layers of the beautiful color. This stone can actually be dominant in purple or green. Most of the time it's like this. It's got the quartz clear in the middle and it's got the slides of all of the greens and the purples all combined. This stone is, you can see right here, in raw form. Or you can buy it in a polished form like these. It's a very prominent um, stone for focusing when you're trying to narrow down a project or making a specific decision. It's good for the eyes, ears, and throat. And then we go to a similar looking stone, but much lighter in color. It can be matte, it can be clear, which is morganite. Morganite is powerful and it's thought to actually calm down symptoms of asthma and emphysema in people. It's wonderful for the circulatory system and oxygenation of the blood. It's very, very good for your lungs and for vertigo as well. And a fun fact, the very first piece of morganite found was found in Madagascar. And it was named after the American financier, J.P. Morgan. Anybody recognize that name? And right here on my beautiful amethyst, I have two pieces of moonstone bracelets. Moonstones, the glow are similar to the moon and the night sky. It is why the stone is named moonstone. It does aid in digestion, in circulation, and is great for the skin. It soothes emotions and it also promotes empathy. Moonstone is a wonderful stone that signifies new beginnings. So if you know someone that needs to have a fresh start, this is an ideal gift for them. All right, so let's get started with the first one. The first one is actually going to be this little flat charm here. Beware that when you order these, it may not come with a jump ring and you absolutely will need jump rings. So if you're ordering these, make sure you get some of the jump rings as well. I went ahead and already beaded this bracelet and I attached two little decorative beads, they're called spacer beads, right there together. And I like to add just a little bit of charm to the actual bracelet so it's not plainly on in between the beads, but you can also do that. Now, let's do this one here, super simple. You're going to go ahead and See that little hole on top of there? You're going to feed the jump ring and there's your charm. And then we're going to go ahead and go right between those two little spacer beads in my case and put it right through the rubber band there. And then it's simply a matter of closing this. And boom, that one is finished. And let's look at the finished product. And there you go. Now, doesn't that look cute when you have two little spacer beads there? I think it gives it a little extra femininity almost to, to the actual bracelet. So that one's simple. You can actually, like I said, if you don't have the little spacer beads, you can go ahead and put it right through one of these beads here. You're just going to split open the bracelet and put it right through there. And so that's your style number one there. Charm number one done. All right, charm number two is gonna be this cute little purse with the pink rhinestones and a teeny tiny bow. How adorable is that? All right, and this one is fairly easy. We're gonna go ahead and bead our bracelet first, and then I will show you what it comes out like when we put the bead in. 
Alrighty, so here's the bracelet. Let me pull this thing over here a little bit. Now, important note to make, depending on the size that you're doing your bracelet, you'll always want to remove one bead per charm that you're putting on there, if it's a slider one, right? If it's this one here, you're putting it in between the beads. You don't need to remove one, but you should be aware of the sizing that you're making. If you're putting beads directly here, like we are about to do, you'll need to remove one because this one replaces the size of this bead. So if you're making a seven inch bracelet and you don't remove this extra bead, it's now going to be too big of a bracelet, okay? And vice versa for the small. Next video, I am gonna show you guys a nifty tool that you can use to measure the correct bracelets. So stay tuned for that one. For now, let's go ahead and be this little guy through here. All right, we'll take out our needle and it's the same exact process. Tug it the opposite way as well. And third time's a charm. No point in telling. <laughs> All right, and we have a beautiful knot there. We've tied it three times and it's pretty uniform. How adorable. All right, so that is charm number two. Let's go to charm number three. All righty. And with this one, we're gonna slip this ring that already comes with the charm right on there. And I want you to take note, do you see there is a width here? I would say it's about one to one and a half millimeters and you do not have to take a bead out of this bracelet to get it true to size. Just know and communicate with the person that you're giving it to that it will be slightly on the little bit of a looser side. If you were to replace this entire bead and take it out, and let's say you're making, for example, a size seven, and all of a sudden you take out this entire bead and you add this, you're actually gonna be quite short because you see the difference in width between the bead and the actual uh, width of this uh, clip here, the ring, it's just, it's way wider. So there's really no need for that. You can go ahead and keep your same and just add the little bead to it. It won't be that much looser. It'll be super adorable, great for stacking. And let's feed it all through here. Very cute. All right, so there you go, guys. We've got three different ways to do three different charms on three different bracelets. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment below and I will answer for you. You guys have a phenomenal day and good luck on your journey and I will see you soon.